Oxygen Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. The Serial Collector, this is the default for non-server machines. So what's a non-server machine? Um, well, anything that doesn't have two or more processors and two or more gigabytes of RAM. That's, by definition, not a server machine. So you'll get um, the Serial Collector. This will use what's known as a Mark Sweep Compact Algorithm. And it will use this in all the generations, whether it's young or old. This will also cause the app to pause during the Stop the World collection. So Mark Sweep Compact, it just marks objects that are um, ready to be deleted, it'll sweep, it'll get rid of the ones that should be removed, and then it will defragment those areas. Now, of course, this uh, performs relatively okay for a single uh, processor machine. Um, however, if you have um, issues with how long uh, your application can pause during these moments, this might not be the ideal collector for you. Again, it is the default for non-server machines. And when I say default, I mean, you know, typically we don't pick which jar garbage collector we're going to be use. The uh, JVM will handle that for us. The parallel collector, this is for system, uh, systems with multiple CPUs. The young generation is handled with what's known as parallel collecting. It still uses a stop the world collection. However, because of its parallel nature with the multiple CPUs, that time that the application is paused is a lot less. The old generation, however, uses the same uh, algorithm that the serial co collector uses, which is the Mark Sweep compact algorithm. Here's a new one, uh, Parallel Compaction Collector. Eventually, according to a white paper I read, I got a link here uh, to that white paper, um, this collector has been designed to replace, eventually, the Parallel Collector. So in this particular collector, the young generation is handled with a per the Parallel Collector algorithm, but the old generation is handled now with a parallel three-phase collection and compacting process. So again, performs just a little bit better in terms of how the old generation is uh, handled. And finally, a concurrent mark sweep collector. This has fewer application pauses than other collectors. The young generation is handled with the same parallel collector as the parallel compaction collector and the regular parallel collector. And the old generation is executed concurrently with the application. Um, so this means, again, fewer pauses in terms of the application runtime. This does not compact, however, so the old generation can become fragmented over time. There are ways that they deal with this fragmentation, um, which uh, I'm not going to get into in this presentation, but keep in mind that it does present um, a little bit of a performance gain since it doesn't need to do the defragmentation, but there is a little bit of a performance hint because you have a fragmented heap. So JVM. We've got the garbage collector. Of course, we have our application code. And, you know, that's an area that we definitely need to uh, consider when we're looking at some of our optimizations. But I really want to make sure that I stress the point here. You, you know, go to this almost last. You know, make sure that you've identified that it's really your application code that's causing these uh, hot spots and uh, uh, bottlenecks. And, by the way, just to be clear, there's hot spot in terms of the name of the JVM that shipped, um, and then there's something called a hotspot, which is more or less just another name for a bottleneck. I'll try to refrain from using hotspot in terms of uh, a performance issue, and I'll use bottleneck instead. So your application code, um, inefficient code can be can reduce performance by taking too long to execute. You can uh, create too many objects, so we have allocation and garbage collection costs, and of course causing deadlocks, which can have our application hang or at least perform slowly. So those are the components that we have. Before you begin tuning, there's some things that you should do, if possible. Now, I realize that, you know, when we're working on our real-world projects, we often have requirements of what uh, JDK we're going to be using and what app server we're going to be using. But if possible, make sure you have the latest JDK and any updates to the API or uh, servers that you're using. Most of these updates that come out, um, include significant performance enhancements. So this can be, again, low-hanging fruit for you. You know, if you're having some performance issues, update that JDK, see if that improves the performance. 
just to go over a couple of the key improvements that came out, for example, in JDK 6. Um, well, for the garbage collector, we had, as I mentioned, there's now four different types to choose from. Many of these um, came from the uh, JDK 5, but uh, I believe the uh, parallel compact was added in uh, JDK 6. The best pick for this uh, JDK, um, for, your, for the garbage collector, is going to be selected automatically. I will show you a way that you can give a hint of as to what um, garbage collector you want to use. But in general, if I were you, I'd start with letting the uh, app server decide which garbage collector to use. Ergonomics. So in Java terminology, an ergonomic is a way to tell the uh, JVM some hints about your application. So if you think about it, there's a couple ways we could configure our application. We could say, here's some command line options that I wanted to tell you this is exactly how big the heap should be. Here's some uh, runtime stuff you have to do. And we could have a lot of you know different uh, uh, command line controls to specify exactly how our app should behave. Ergonomics is sort of more of a uh, handshake with the JVM, where we're giving suggestions, we're giving them hints about our application. And so the JVM will then say, okay, you've given me a little bit more information about your app. And these uh, hints, by the way, are just command line uh, uh, variables that I'll show you in a second. And, you know, it'll use that information when it decides how it should optimize your, for example, heap or your garbage collector. So hints are added to the command line startup of an application. I've got an example here of what that might be. Minus XX colon plus use adaptive garbage collection boundary. In this case, this one would allow the garbage collector to change the allotted space between young and old generations. You're not saying here, I want you to make the uh, young space you know, so many megabytes and the old space, so many megabytes. You're simply saying, look, I want you to be adaptive. Um, I may not need as much space in the old as, you know, you think by default. So it's a hint to the uh, compiler, to the JVM. Another improvement that came with JDK6 is a better startup performance. Uh, class boot up is now much faster. And they provided the ability to uh, put a splash page before the JVM is even loaded for your application. So again, this improves perceived performance, which uh, while it's not changing anything with actual performance time, uh, may be all that you need for certain performance requirements. There's an improved runtime performance. There's new types of locking that will help improve synchronized calls. And actually lots of uh, many different other optimizations that were found in JDK6. So you can take a look at all the different uh, performance enhancements at the uh, URL that I have on this page. And again, you don't no need to write down these URLs. There's going to be an email sent out probably tomorrow that will give you a link where you can download these slides and you'll get all of the different links that I'm giving and uh, recommendations for further material. All right, so we've identified um, the different components that can give us issues. We've defined um, some of the low-hanging fruit that we should check before we begin dealing with our performance tuning lifecycle. Let's move on now to that lifecycle itself. And so I've come up with six um, basic steps uh, that you would go through. Which ones you spend the most time in, uh, that's up to you. Or whether you want to change these around, that's okay, too. This is just a suggestion of what I do when I'm actually trying to uh, go through and tune my application. First thing I do is I define the requirements. If I don't know what the requirements are, how do I know if I pass? So that's pretty simple. I define the requirements. Second is then I measure and test. I never, ever fix anything. I never make any optimizations until I've defined requirements and I've created a baseline, meaning I have some base metrics of how things are performing. Once I do that, I compare that to my requirements. I say, do I have any issues? Are there any requirements not being met? There are. Then what I'm going to do is want to identify bottlenecks, and that's going to be the uh, visual VM portion of this presentation. So I will uh, go through and uh, measure different things and try to figure out what on earth is making this slow. Once I've done, if I identify the bottleneck, I'll implement some fixes. So we'll talk about some, uh, you know, quick hits of uh, different kinds of problems you'll frequently run into and what are some of your options in terms of fixing that uh, performance. Then I will measure and test again, creating a new baseline. 
Um, I'll compare that to the old baseline and the requirements. I want to make sure I didn't make things worse. I want to make sure I'm getting closer, if not meeting that requirement. And more importantly, what I'm also looking for is, did I just ruin anything else? Oftentimes with performance tuning, it's kind of like an onion. So as soon as you fix something, that unveils some other problem. And so you kind of have to do this iteratively. Um, so in general, if necessary, uh, then you repeat steps three through six until you've met all of the requirements uh, defined. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.